Howdy, how's it going? We've got Matthew 26, 47 through 56 today for our devotion. And this is where Jesus is arrested. You know, Judas brings in uh, the mob to go get Jesus. So let's read this. I suppose I should say too, you know, this is the account in Matthew. In some of the other gospel accounts, there's more information. There's other things that is mentioned. But uh, this is what we get from Matthew's account. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. So we see Judas betraying Jesus with a kiss. He comes in and kisses Jesus and so they know who to arrest and Peter if you remember before was like I'm not going to disown you I'm willing to die with you so Peter shows he was willing to die here it doesn't say it was Peter but in other gospel accounts we we know it's Peter who cuts off the ear of the servant of the high priest now if you take a sword and you cut off somebody's ear are you shooting for the ear I mean that I'm convinced Peter, is, he's going for the fatal death blow. You know, he's wanting to smack this guy in the head with a sword, cuts off his ear. Um, Peter's willing to go to war. He's willing to fight and battle. He's willing to die. But then Jesus indicates to Peter that he's kind of, he's off on this. He's missing the point here. Um, and so he tells Peter to put his sword away. This isn't how this is supposed to go. You know, in other places we see, uh, you know, Jesus heals the man's ear, those sorts of things. And it is shown that Peter is just missing it a little bit. You know, he was willing to die with Jesus, um, but this didn't make sense to, you know, like, put my sword away. The bad guys with the swords and clubs are here. I want to fight. I, I, let's win. I mean, isn't this what this is all about? This is the moment. And Jesus says, no, you put that sword away. And now Peter is thrown off. He doesn't know what to do. Um, have you ever missed the will of God just a little bit? You know, is Jesus going to get the victory? Yes. Is it going to come with Peter whacking people with swords? No, not even close. <laughs> not even close to Peter whacking people with swords. That's not where the victory is going to come from. The victory is going to be, over, is going to be overcoming death through the resurrection, you know, overcoming sin through Christ's death on the cross and then overcoming that death through his resurrection. And Peter just didn't know that. He didn't understand that. And so he missed the will of God. He was off by just a little bit. Jesus was going to get the victory, but Peter didn't understand how Jesus was going to get the victory. And this was very disorienting to him, um, very difficult for Peter. And that's, you know, what will lead to his betrayals. He doesn't know what to do. He knows to swing a sword, but if he's not swinging a sword, now he's not sure what to do. And one of the things that can happen to us is we're, we're sure God's plan is going to go a certain way. And we might be a little off on it, and then it doesn't happen how we thought. And it can be very disorienting, and it can be difficult for us to process and, and try to get back on track with God's plan.
And I think this happens to all believers. This happened to me where I thought God was leading in a particular way. And then it turned out to not exactly be like that. And, and then you're kind of like, uh, uh, you know, and you're unsure. But the key is get back on track with the Lord as soon as possible. So seek understanding of what really is your plan, Lord. Help me see it so that I don't run the wrong directions and do the wrong things. So we want to get back on track. If Peter, if Peter could get off track, it can happen to us. And we need to realize it does happen, but then we want to get back on track with the plan of God so that we don't go around whacking people in the head with swords in the name of the Lord and be completely off of God's plan. So let's pray and let's believe God to show us that when we misunderstand His plan or we get a little bit off of His plan, how to get back on. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness to Peter. He makes these very public mistakes because he's so uh, boisterous and speaks out. Uh, and other people, of course, make the same mistakes, but they're not very public because they don't talk as much. So, Lord, thank you for Peter as an example for us because we do the same things. We misunderstand your plan. We do things thinking we're defending you or that we're advancing your kingdom, but it's really a mistake like Peter whacking the guy in the head with a sword, and we need to get back on track with you. So, Lord, help us to see when we're off track, we're not tracking with your plan, and Father, help us to get back on track quickly. Help us to have the humility to not just keep going with it when we sense that something's not quite right, but let us stop and seek you and get direction so that we can get back fully on track, on board with your plan, not going off to the side at all. So, Bless us in this way. In Jesus' name, amen.